we need to have more food sovereignty. Um, and in terms of like alternative protein as well, it's very critical. I think the Ukraine crisis brings to light that it's not about, it's not necessarily just a food crisis, but rather a feed crisis. And in this instance, it's critical that companies like ours start providing alternatives and solutions to the problem in terms of like being able to provide locally and sustainably other source of proteins and um, other source of fertilizer. Well, we were just talking about the energy crisis and how uh, countries that traditionally relied on sources of a supply from Russia are now thinking about alternatives. If we can transition this to the food industry, you've had a lot of suppliers in the industry that have operated a certain way for decades. How open are they to thinking about alternatives now as we do see shortages and spikes in traditional components? Well, it's, it's a very good point. I think, you know, in some way, legislation and regulation has accelerated the shift for for people, and I think the fact that consumer are more and more mindful about using products that are locally sourced and traceable is also an accelerator. So the success that we've had in securing contracts prior to this has shown that people are really keen to find other ways. And I assume, and this is a few weeks, that it's only going to be an accelerator and put it at the forefront of people's mind, be it you know in terms of like government and states, but as also consumers. And, and, you know, uh, we are a B2B company, so we provide ingredients that then serves other businesses. And these businesses clearly have to think of alternative today. So they were open and understanding also because results have shown that our product offer benefit. It's not just an alternative. It has health benefits and other, other benefit in terms of taste or in terms of like, just to give you an example, when, uh, when we use insect protein to feed shrimps, the mortality rate goes down by 40%. So you have benefits in terms of uh, productivity, I guess, for people to use it. So they're keen to use a good product. But equally, I think the mindset of being able to source locally, uh, and you were talking about fertilizer. So our solution in terms of fertilizer is, is in granulates dry, and it's odorless. And you can basically use it and transport it quite easily, and, it's, and you can source it locally. So in Namia, where we are building... Uh, the largest vertical farm in the world at the moment that will be ready by the end of the year. Uh, we're already starting to have deals with local farmers to provide them with our frass, which is our bio fertilizer. Well, Isabel, who thought that you and I would ever be talking about mealworms when you were at UBS? Nice to speak to you this morning. Um, tell me about the mealworms then and how environmentally friendly is this? It's completely circular. And the frass that we're talking about, so the fertilizer is basically the, um, there I say, the poop of the insect. So that is recycled and, uh, and that we put in compact. So everything is environmentally friendly. We are a B Corp certified company. We're a mission led company. So um, thank the old banker in me telling you this. The founders that I work with today are complete, they're biologists and they're activists. Well, they're very passionate about the environment and that's what started them. So the really here, the idea is to have a company that unites both the financial KPIs together with the impact KPIs. So this is all bio, this is all environmentally friendly and monitored so, so much so that today as CFO, when I monitor my financial KPI, I'm also monitoring my impact KPIs.